Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a quick look at Starfield again, uh, except we're going to take a look at some settings that you should probably keep on, and then a setting that you might want to switch around. So let's get into it. No intro today. Uh, so you can see here that I'm running around in New Atlantis, and this is kind of like the infamous zone of, yeah, like you're going to be getting hobbled by your CPU performance, and you're just going to be getting crappy performance all around. You can see that that's clearly not the case when we're plugged in here at 30 watts. Uh, as you can see here, the CPU boost on the left, we're hitting 3.7, 3.8 gigahertz. Now, if you're of the crowd that believes that cpu boost should be running off because games don't utilize cpu as much as you think they do even though it's running 3.9 gigahertz almost 4 gigahertz right now so if we were to run cpu boost on uh that's what we're doing right now we are able to boost up to oh geez i don't know something crazy like five something gig 5.1 gigahertz on the cpu which we're not going to see we'll never see that but if we were to turn cpu boost off that leaves us at our base uh, base clock speed of 3.3 gigahertz so you would never see yourself boosting above 3.3 gigahertz and you can see here that just running around in town that yeah we're getting like pretty decent fps mind you we're playing on a handheld this is at 1080p though so if you were dropped down to 720p you might be taking some of the load uh, but again it's more of a cpu bound scenario so you're not really going to see too much of a difference performance wise but you can see that we are consistently above the 3.3 gigahertz mark so if you were to run cpu boost off then you would be hobbling your cpu performance again in these cities here where there's a lot of the ai and the pathing and uh all the quest storylines like all that stuff like everything that's going on in here right now is just taxing on the cpu you can see that we're running at like 60 percent usage which is insane and you can see that the gpu is actually being underutilized right now at about 80 percent there and that's again because we're cpu bottlenecked so i can't stress this enough that more and more games are going to be like this in the future uh, honestly if you're running cpu boost off uh, the only logical explanation for it at this point is if you want to save battery life when you're running an FPS cap scenario. So if you want to cap your FPS at 30 and then you don't want to let the CPU boost up much beyond that, by all means, this isn't the game where you're going to turn it off even if you are capping your FPS because that obviously that CPU still needs to boost up because as we're getting 30 FPS here, we're still hitting 3.7 gigahertz minimum on the uh, CPU there we're not going below 3.3 whatsoever. Um, now getting into my other setting that I wanna talk about. Uh, so we have two different upscaling methods here that we can see. Uh, so the first one is FSR2. That's what I was running around on before. And there was a bit of stuttering and everything kind of thrown in there. And you can see here that if we go to Fidelity CAS uh, instead of FSR, it's not going to tax the CPU as much. And we're actually going to allow the CPU to boost up higher because of it, uh, because it's not utilizing the algorithm of the machine learning to upscale the image uh, this is just like a straight up scale like there's nothing fancy about it think of it like fsr1 type technology uh, but we can see that the cpu is allowed to boost up even higher so and more consistently so we're running now at like 3.8 3.9 and honestly if i reset my fps calculator here uh, we can see that the one percent lows aren't too bad i'm sprinting around here so the fps average is just below 30 but we can see here that yeah we're touching 30 most of the time 32 and then we'll run into the more dense area of the city um, and we can see like obviously with the population quality set to low but we're still hitting pretty well a 30 fps average so honestly it's not that bad and i find that with the fidelity cast there's those less moments like hard stutters that you saw like just right before i went to go change the setting that was like a hard stutter and honestly i think that was fully due to fsr2 and you'll notice that in other games as well like call of duty modern warfare 2 that's another one where you'd want to run fsr1 over fsr2 because of that cpu hit that you take and then finally, if you need my settings here, if you haven't gone through the other uh, video, I'm not going to do any fancy editing on this one. This is just kind of quick and dirty just to kind of tell you not to run CPU boost on while you're trying to play Starfield and to try out Fidelity Cast. So you can see here, uh, I'll get that out of the way there, my apologies. So we can see that basically you'll want to run, go to medium preset quality. Uh, so you run to medium and then you'll turn shadow quality down to low 
reflections down to low, volumetric lighting to low, crowd density low, motion blur you can leave on if you're a fan of it. It honestly doesn't do much to performance, if anything. Uh, you're not going to notice it in the city anyway. GTAO and grass quality medium, contact shadows low. Uh, upscaling CAS is what I do, and then I like to keep my ups or my sharpening sorry, around 50-60%. Uh, you can play with that to your taste though. Film grain intensity completely off because that just adds noise to the image and we don't want any of that in my opinion and now we can see here going back into the city once everything kind of settles in there we're not getting over 100 fps average there we go and we can see here that yeah the cpu is still boosting up well and above so at the end of the day, honestly, you're going to be getting, uh, this is a 30 FPS game on handhelds and honestly on most people's systems, this is going to be a 30 FPS game. So what I would recommend doing is just instill a 30 FPS cap, whether you use it through the command center, just make sure you start, uh, set the FPS cap here to 30 before you start the game, or you can use RTSS as well. So if you have RTSS uh, or MSI Afterburner, one of those solutions, you can have RTSS here and I'll punch in even uh, closer there for you. So if you have RTSS, you can actually have your own uh, FPS limiter here. So you can set frame rate limit uh, right there, uh, scan line sync as well. So here I'll bring it in a bit closer. So frame rate limit. So honestly, you can set this to set up through MSI Afterburner as well. I'm not going to get too much into that. Uh, again, this is supposed to just be a quick and dirty video. So at the end of the day, I just want to give a quick shout out to my channel members, Roy Watney, uh, Amoa, Darkstar, Rico1217, Joey VR, and the new member, uh, Root Access. So I really appreciate you guys all for joining and everyone for watching. So be happy to share this video around if you think it might help uh, people with their performance and their gameplay experience. Uh, just note that I did test that potato quality mod that was going around and I did notice any per, uh, discernible difference in performance on the ally just a worse image quality so i think my settings are probably some of the best ones out there in terms of image quality performance but uh, feel free to let me know on what you guys have been running if you've been running all low all medium or whatever let me know in the comments as always i hope you all have a great day